Welcome back, gang, for the first time and hopefully many more to come. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notifications right here, this little bell, so you can get those emails every time we go live. Peace. Okay. Um, yeah, this is Rob with the boxing voice. Um, I've got um, the matchroom fight here, Anthony Fowler on the line. Um, hi, Anthony. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm spot on. Thanks, Rob. Yourself? Yeah, good. Thank you, mate. Um, I see you're back in the gym after Christmas. How's that uh, working out for you? Well, funny. Um, I started back. I always train every week as it is, but I started my camp yesterday. So um, I'm a bit sore now. I just <laughs> I didn't expect my first week yeah. back, but... So, but, so I know what to do, right? I mean, I'll probably be fighting March, I think, so just get me so ready for that. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Um, I just wanted to uh, bring up a few things. Um, uh, it's been a, it was a good 2017 for you, making your debut. How, how was it um, making that debut on the big uh, Brooks Spence card uh, at Sheffield there? Yeah, I loved it. It was amazing. Like, the atmosphere was, was unbelievable. When I walked out, it was, it was mad. When I was walking to a football, a football like, match, it was crazy. But, um, yeah, 2017 was a good year. Could have been better. I got a um, hand injury towards the end of the year, so it put me out. But um, this year, I'm the hands back better now, so it'll be nice and pretty this year and some, over some big fights. Yeah, um, looking ahead at uh, 2018, where, where do you um, you know, ideally want to be at the end of the year? Are you looking to be um, maybe looking at a con you know, contendering for uh, a British title maybe or just putting yourself in that kind of position? Yeah, the FCN for the British title is a, is a reasonable target. It's, um, it's going to be a tough fight to score fighters about, and they'd be, they'd be a tough champion, but I think I'm good enough to win the title. So, um, at the end of the year, maybe fight to act, if not, at least in English. As long as we've got yeah. a belt, I, mean, I want a belt of 100%. That's, that's the main thing. I need, I need to have a belt at the end of the year. Yeah, of course. Um, so, coming from your uh, you know, very decent amateur background, obviously, uh, 2014 Commonwealth Games medal, uh, gold medalist, um, I think a uh, world and uh, European bronze. Um, do you think that experience has put you in good stead, you know, stepping over to the pros? Yes, definitely. Um, I am fairly experienced. I've boxed a lot of good fighters. As an amateur as well, I box at super middleweight, which people don't realise, so I've dropped two divisions to go to light middleweight. So I am really big and strong with the weights, and I've beat a lot of good super middleweights in my time. So at this weight, I really think I am going to be a force. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I've, we, we've all seen a lot of uh, people bring up uh, the Cole Froch comparisons. Is that something that sits well with you? Um, it is. Obviously, it's Cole Froch had a, a great career, and he's he done, he done amazing what he achieved. But Froch had his own style. Froch maybe took a few shots that he didn't need to take. Maybe, maybe so. I want to be a bit it's like similar to Frost and me aggression and me power and me, me determination and me strength. But I want to have a bit more of a better defence than what Carl had. I'm just not just to Carl. Obviously, he was a um, four-weight world champion, four-time world champion. Unbelievable. He took a lot of good shots and he had that great chin. I don't want to be known for a great chin. I want to be known for a great defence, if you get me. I yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I've seen, obviously... Um, uh, now you're with um, David Coldwell, and um, I've seen on your your Instagram and that you post a lot of um, training footage, and you've been working a lot on like head movement. Is that is that been a good a good um, a matchup with you and Dave Coldwell? You seem to really hit it off together. Yeah, that, Dave's told me so much about boxing, um, and I never used to think about the centre as much as I do now. I used to think about attack, attack, attack. attack whereas now I'm more conscious of what's going back at me, so I am taking a lot less shots. Like last year, it might sound mad, but I never had one black eye. Whereas in previous years, when I was fight, fighting, I'd always had fights with black eyes because I was taking a lot more shots. So that's like a little thing to me that it's working. 
<laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I just want to bring up um, your your very active uh, fighter on social media. I just um, wanted your opinions on it as it um, being a tool for fighters. I mean, obviously, you know, I don't don't want to maybe draw your uh, opinions on like obviously the Ahara Davis situation that arose um, this week and that, but um, just using it as a tool. Is it just um, for like a brand building? Is it is it um, you know, just to draw that fan base and uh, get your name out there? Yeah, of course. It's a, I use it a lot because I think it's very important to be out there and show people what I'm working on, get people behind me. People, people, feel, people feel like to be part of the journey, I think. I think like fans want to be part of the journey. They don't just want to watch the fight. They want to watch the build-up, all the backstage stuff. So, like, for example, on my fight day, I show my, my supporters the whole day. Like, I'll have the Instagram story on the whole day in the changes for the fight. The walkouts, everything. So you can be part of the journey and read the comments, and I find you to play people as well, stuff like that. But it's really cool to be so far and trying to get bigger as as I get bigger as a fighter. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's um, yeah, I, I know myself. Um, you you're very much uh, interactive. You've you've replied to me many times, and I can see all the support you're getting, and you know, uh, t-shirts and caps and all that. So um, you're building your brand there, and um. Uh, it's all looking good. Um, how how do you see um, um, how easy? I mean, was it for you know the, the step up from the amateurs to the pros? Was it an easy decision? Obviously, going with Matchroom. Were, were you with a smaller promoter prior to that? Um, I met I met with all the promoters. I met, I met with a good few, and I knew Matchroom was the best. But it depends on what they valued me as a fighter. Like the offer I got as of me what I wanted because I wouldn't undervalue myself and. If Matthew didn't offer me what I wanted, I wouldn't have let him Matthew because I, I, I want to be valued at what I, what I am. I'm a very hard working fighter. I've had so many, I've had so many amateur titles and been all around the world fighting, so I wanted to get the offer that was right for me, which Matthew did give me in the end, so I was happy. But like, it's important to be valued as a fighter, not just like another another fighter. I want, I want people to value me, if you understand what I mean. Like, not just, yeah, of like, course, yeah. yeah. So that yeah. a match would be great to me. Like the profile has got all through the roof, and um, I don't know better. Like I said, once I start getting a title mix, I start having um, fights where people think it's 50-50, and then I'm gonna smash it up. So I want people to see that when they like, settle. People think like, oh, this will be a test. I want to show people then how good I am, really. Yeah, of course. I mean, um, for the um, you know the the fighters turning pro and then they get, you know, uh, to the record that you've reached, the the 4-0 and with three knockouts, you come under a bit of stick. It's either they say you're, you're fighting bums and they're there to be knocked over. And then, and then there's also, um, if you come up against a bit of a stiffer test, it's always oh, no good. He's not, he's not world-class or he's not good enough. Um, yeah. It's a difficult thing for you pros. That's the thing. When I do go up against fast and it, it, I don't think it will be stiffer until I get to a, a good level, like some fighters who are like prospects step up, and then you get the have like close fights and they struggle. But I don't believe that happened to me. I believe I'll pass all these tests with flying colours. Obviously, so far I haven't, I haven't boxed no one who's like at a, at a great standard, but I have everyone I've boxed, I've just destroyed. Do you know what I mean? One person went a distance of me, but he was in complete survival mode. You know what I mean? I, I was I was actually fuming myself that I didn't stop him, but he just wouldn't, he wouldn't throw no shots back. He just Hitting and holding and moving, it wouldn't. It's just tough, frustrating. But that lad had been stopped three times in 61 fights, and he boxed two world champions. So he knew what he was doing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, um, in February we've got the the British Beef card, and I just wanted to get your opinion on um, uh, your mate uh, Lawrence Acoli and uh, Chamberlain. I just uh, wonder if I could get your your view on how that fight will go. Yeah, I think I think Lawrence will win. I think Lawrence is a bit Lawrence is too too powerful for him. I think like I like Chamberlain. I like his like he's, he's got a nice little style and he works hard. He goes, he travels the world, sparring with some respect. He goes around sparring top lads, but I just think he's lacking that power that a Coley's got. Coley's very naturally strong and he's very he's got long arms. He's very awkward and he whacks very hard with his right hand. So I just think Chamberlain will, will like be a bit too cautious about the power and like I think Lawrence will probably beat him on points. I think it goes to points that. I think I think Lawrence will win. Okay, okay, and obviously, um, 
stable mate there with David Caldwell. Um, the disappointment um, that with the fight falling through, but um, Tony Bellew, David Hay. Um, obviously, it's been uh, made again, and we're looking forward to that one. Um, how do you see that one going? Yeah, again, I think Bellew, I think Bellew will win again. I think this time, David Hay will be a bit more cautious of Bellew, and he'll be a bit more switched on. But I just believe Bellew's like younger and, sh- and fresher, and like Bellew's such a great boxer. I like when I watch him in the gym. He does everything very correct. He's very technically good. I think David Hay will be a bit wild missing again, and I think Bellew. Beat him on points. I think he beat him on points this time. Nice one. Um, uh, last of all, with um, another Team GB um, uh, phone call, um, we hopefully will hear soon that the Anthony Joshua and Joseph Parker unification fight will be announced. Um, yeah. I'm sure I know how you're going to pick this one, but do you want to just break that down for us? Yeah, I'm very confident of I mean, Joshua winning, most probably by KO again. I think it will happen as well because Parker just box on what YouTube against Chibi Fiori probably got paid not much at all whereas against Joshua he's going to be getting paid millions so I think Parker have got that big payday and also got the chance to to win two belts so I think it'll definitely happen next that fight and I think I think Joshua will knock him out but I do believe it'd be a lot more competitive of, of a fight than Joshua's ever had I think obviously Crystal but I think Parker will be very competitive and I think um, first six rounds will be close then to later on Joshua will knock him out yeah, yeah, and uh, hopefully we can get the machine on the uh, on the undercard. Yeah, well, I haven't boxed on Joshua on the card yet, so hopefully I get on at least values or Joshua this year. That'll be uh, that'll be amazing for me. Would um would you think um, uh, the boss uh, David Caldwell would um, want you on the same card as Bailey? Just you know uh, wanting to concentrate on on yeah, Tony's fight, that, maybe. That, that, that's answer is obviously it's just to him. If Dave doesn't want me on, it, I'd respect that because. Dave is the boss at the end of the day, it's just to him, but if he, if he, I don't see any harm, me fighting in the box early on the night, but it's just a day, you know, for every, whatever they do, but hopefully I get on one of them, I'll be, I'll be good, I'll be good, and be experienced. Yeah, well, okay, um, Anthony, um, obviously I want to thank you for joining us on the Boxing Voice, um, if you want to give out any social media for anyone who wants to follow you. Yeah, well, me on Twitter, and my Instagram is at afala06, so give me a follow, please, people. Thanks a lot for the support. Yeah, no problem. Thanks again, Anthony. Uh, it's good talking to you. Thanks, Rob. See you soon, mate. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. Bye. 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 What is up, TBV family? Yes, yes, YouTube has been cutting funding to uh, their channels as of late and with net neutrality uh, going through th- its process. The internet is changing. If you want to keep your favorite channel intact, coming up with tons of content, and plus get hours and hours of extra content, head over to patreon.com forward slash the boxing voice. Uh, to become a member of the TBV family and help support the channel. Peace.